Hello and welcome to the Photography and Videography channel. I'm Nigel Cooper and today I'm doing an image quality comparison test between the Sony a7 III and Hasselblad's X1D2 50C. Now, if you're familiar with either of these cameras, you're probably thinking, hold on a minute, this isn't going to be a fair comparison. It's not exactly comparing apples for apples. And you'd be right. After all, the Sony's got a full frame 24.2 megapixel sensor, whereas the Hasselblad has got a much larger medium format sensor that's 50 megapixels. But there's a reason I want to do this comparison. I'm going to tell you up front that the Hasselblad does come out on top in pretty much every area. But in some instances, the difference isn't as great as you might think. So I'm going to show you three images on the computer that I took with both of these cameras at the same time. And I'm going to point out the differences so you can decide for yourself whether it's worth spending the extra money to get into a Hasselblad medium format system over something like the Sony. At this moment in time, the Sony a7 III comes in at about £1,500 for the body only, whereas the Hasselblad is coming in at about £5,400 for the body only. So that's a difference of £3,900. So without further ado, I'm going to jump onto the computer, I'm going to show you these three images, and then I'm going to come back here for my final summing up and thoughts. Okay, so I've got three photographs I'd like to quickly go through with you. On the left, I've got Capture One Pro 20 with the Sony files, and on the right, I've got Hasselblad's Focus software with the Hasselblad files. Just to let you know that these three photographs were all taken on a tripod. I wanted to try and guarantee that there's not gonna be any camera shake. So when I zoom in, it's gonna to be totally fair. None of the shots have been edited. I haven't adjusted the white balance or the exposure or anything. They're raw, straight out of camera. So again, it's gonna be a fairly equal comparison. So the three shots I have is this shot of Clock Tower, um, I've got a shot here also of my friend Danny that I took over in Newmarket and finally I've got this um, something leaning a little bit more towards scientific, just a picture of two books that I propped up outside. It's not the most scientific test but uh, there's a reason I wanted to show that image as well. So starting with the clock tower, again the uh, Sony on the left as you can see here this was taken with a Sony FE 85mm f1.8 lens all three of these shots were and on the right all the Hasselblad shots were taken with a Hasselblad 120mm lens okay so when you look at them both here they look fine I think both cameras have done a, a relatively good job especially in the shadow detail down here at the bottom they both seem to have brought out the same amount of shadow detail if I just zoom in a little bit here on both of these shots here we go. Not too dissimilar. Um, again, these kind of things can be corrected. You can pull out a little bit more detail in post-production if you want, but um, I just figured I would show you this area anyway. So as you can see, not too dissimilar. Uh, they've both done a relatively good job. Maybe the uh, Sony on the left has brought out a little bit more um, with the Hasselblad here. You could probably pull out a little bit more detail in post-production. Okay, so if I basically just move up to the top part to show the clock, and I'm going to zoom in quite a lot here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to zoom in all the way to 400% on both images. It's when you zoom in this far that you start to notice a little bit more difference with the resolution. You've got to remember the Sony um, is just over 24 megapixels on full frame. The Hasselblad, on the other hand, is 50 megapixels on a medium format sensor that is considerably larger. Um, so if you basically look at the number one here, you can see that there's some stepping down the edge of it that uh, that is quite noticeable. And again, looking across this section here, you can see these little sort of stepping marks, almost like JPEG stepping, but they're, they're not JPEG stepping, obviously, because we're in raw mode here. Um, whereas on the Hasselblad on the right, the stepping down the edge of this Roman numeral one is a little bit less pronounced. Same for the stepping going across this edge here. It's just a little bit less so. So that's the um, Hasselblad on the right and the Sony on the left. Um, next, I just want to show you something in the tones. Let me just zoom in a little bit more here. Now, for me, um, if you look at the Sony image on the left here, the tones don't appear to be quite as smooth as the Hasselblad on the right. The Hasselblad just has really nice tones. The way they blend into each other, it's just very smooth. Um, over here on the left, if you look at this area, the brickwork with the sharp edge of this shadow coming down here, and just the little speckles in the brickwork, um, you know, some slightly darker areas, some slightly lighter areas. But over here on the Hasselblad, 
you still have those light and dark areas, but it's just the way the tones blend into one another. Uh, the dynamic range seems to be a little bit greater, so these tones are just smoother. And the overall image on the Hasselblad here on the right just has a smoothness that the Sony doesn't have. Again, if you look down here, you know, this little bit of um, lead work or whatever it may be over here and comparing it to the Hasselblad, it just seems to be smoother. Just the overall image just doesn't have the kind of the, the gritty bite that the Sony has on the edge. Okay, so that's the first image out of the way. Next, I'm going to move over to this photograph that I took of my friend Danny. Um, nothing special, just a portrait. This is taken outside her house. I just asked her to lean against her car. Um, again, the camera is mounted on a tripod. You may be forgiven for thinking this is in fact the same image, but if you look carefully, you can see that on the Sony shot, the wind was actually blowing a little bit in her hair, whereas on the Hasselblad shot, it had died down a trifle. Now this was taken on an overcast day, so I didn't have any sun to contend with, which was good. And I asked Danny to remain as still as possible and retain exactly the same pose for the few seconds it took me to remove the Sony camera off the tripod and put the Hasselblad on. As you can see, I've composed them both exactly the same. There's no cropping going on here at all. If you look at the space between her elbow and the edge of the frame here and here, and down here on her hip, there's a little gap there between her hip and the edge of the frame on both images. I've cropped just above the knee and left a little bit of headroom. So the proportions are about as good as I could possibly get for both images. Now, the first thing I want to point out is just the colors. If you look at the Sony image on the left, how it's interpreted the colors of the jacket compared to how the Hasselblad has interpreted the jacket. There's not too much difference. It could be argued that the Hasselblad has a little bit more punch, um, a little bit more vibrancy to the, to the reds in the jacket here. Whereas on the left, it doesn't have quite as much of that bright redness. Um, again, these are little things that can be adjusted in post-production anyway. You could basically do a color select and select the red and just sort of bring that out a little bit more if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little. There we go. Same on the Hasselblad. There we are. Okay, what I'd like you to look at now is the, um, again, this tonal range thing. If you look here under the eye, in fact, let me just zoom in a little bit more here, just so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so on the left here with the Sony, we have these slightly darker areas under the eye here and just around the edges, and it's the way they transition out into the lighter areas. If you compare the one on the left to the Hasselblad on the right, the Hasselblad, the way it sort of transitions from these slightly darker areas into lighter areas, it's just more seamless. It's just a smoother transition there. And again, I just sort of put that down to the larger sensor, possibly with the Hasselblad having a little bit more dynamic range. And it's the same in the hair if I zoom out a little bit. You can see the way it transitions from these dark areas in the middle coming out into the lighter areas. With the Hasselblad, as it goes from the dark to the light, the tonal range is just smoother and more seamless. Okay, I'm gonna zoom right in now. And what I would like you to look at here is just the detail and the resolution. Okay, here we go. So on the shot on the left here, if you look at this eyelash here, again, you can see the stepping a uh, little sort of almost like JPEG blocks as we go up the eyelash here. Whereas on the Hasselblad, yes, they're still stepping there, but there's more of them. So the detail is a little bit more. And it's the same in the eye itself. If you look at the detail in the eye, uh, the colors, and then look at the Hasselblad, it's just a little bit easier to see them. Okay, finally, I'd just like you to look at the jumper here on the left-hand side, the Sony shot. You can see that um, it's black and you've got the detail in the jumper, but on the Hasselblad, it seems to be maybe a little bit more crushed. You can still see the ribs and the detail in the jumper, but it's just a little bit more crushed on that one. So um, that's a portrait shot. And finally, I just want to move over to this one. It's not exactly the most scientific shot you'll ever see, but I basically just balanced a couple of books on the chair outside my house, took these in daylight, the reason I took these shots is just to show you the resolution. So if I zoom in a little bit here, for example, to let me just come over to this side. Same on the Hasselblad over on the right. 
Okay, what I want to zoom in on here is where it says development. Here we go. Okay, what I want you to look at here is the letter D on the left and this stepping that basically goes around this corner. Now, um, I actually had to use a magnifying glass and hold it to the computer screen when I did this, but I actually counted the amount of steps as it steps up on this corner. And the amount of steps going around this bend on the Sony are 12. On the Hasselblad, the amount of steps going around this bend are 16. So there are a few more of them, and they're a little bit smaller, but that's to be expected considering the Hasselblad is a 50 megapixel sensor, and it's a larger sensor, whereas the Sony is just over 24 megapixels and it's full frame. Okay, so bearing in mind this is now at the extreme top right-hand edge of the image, so um, we all know that as you go towards the top edges, um, things can get a little bit softer because of the uh, science in lens design. Uh, but on the left here, if you just concentrate on this little registered trademark, this are in a circle, and then on the Hasselblad, we've got the same one here, Again, you can see the stepping slightly here. On the Hasselblad, you can't. However, it could be argued that the Sony is slightly sharper um, in this instance, getting towards the edge, whereas the Hasselblad appears to be a little bit softer. And remember, no sharpening or detail has been done on this. These are just, just, the, these are just the raw images as they come in. Um, again, looking at this S here, uh, slight stepping um, on the Hasselblad there isn't, but the Hasselblad does appear to be a little bit softer in this area. Finally, I exported these images as 16-bit TIFF files from Capture One Pro 20 for the Sony images and from Hasselblad's own focus software for the Hasselblad images, just so you can evaluate the images and the differences for yourself as I go from the regular shot to a closer head and shoulder shot and then a tighter cropped headshot and finally an extreme close-up of the eye. Feel free to pause the video while you evaluate the subtle differences between the two but remember it's going to be harder for you to look at the differences here on the YouTube video, whereas for me looking at the raw files it's much clearer and much easier for me to see the little intricacies and the differences in resolution and detail and tonal range and colour reproduction for example. Okay, so there we have it. I've been through the free images. You might not have been able to see some of the differences so clearly, considering I uploaded this video to YouTube at a resolution of 1920 by 1080. But for me, looking at the raw images from both these cameras in focus and Capture One Pro 20, I can clearly see that the Hasselblad has got more resolution, more detail, and it's sharper and I prefer the smoother tonal range of the Hasselblad and just the overall look of those images. So would I upgrade? I think I would, but I would still keep the Sony camera because both of these cameras are built for a different job. If you're a sports photographer, for example, you shouldn't even be looking at the Hasselblad because 2.7 frames per second is nowhere near enough and the focusing on the Hasselblad is slow and laboured at best. And if you were to try and use this in any kind of sports situation, you would get way more misses than you would hits. Whereas with the Sony, with its snappy focus and its faster frames per second, you would get a lot more hits and a lot less misses. So um, there we go, that's my evaluation of it. I hope you got something out of this video. Even if you got a little bit, I would consider it worth my while making it to start off with. So thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again real soon.